We are in the middle of a um, series on the full story. If you're new or visiting us today, we are making our way through, starting in Genesis in the beginning and ending at the end with the amen of Revelation, and we look forward to that day. One of the challenges of working our way through the full story is we are teaching and preaching the texts that we are reading through. And so we are in the middle of the minor prophets, a prophet named Joel. We also have been reading through a prophet named Obadiah and a prophet named Amos. And we're recognizing in this story that we have been reading along this prophet Joel comes along and there's this theme of the day of the Lord. A day of the Lord where there's this promised judgment and finality for all mankind. It's a really a scary day. And as we read of this day, we recognize here the context in the book of Joel, that Joel has, we don't really know when the book of Joel was written, but we do know that he had a good knowledge of the other prophets. There's references to the prophet Zephaniah. There's references to the prophet Isaiah. There's reference to the prophet Malachi. There's references all throughout. And in the book of Joel, it seems that Joel has come to a place that God has given him a word that, is, that recognizes that the people of Israel are in a pretty hopeless place. There's this longing within them for something new, for the something new that we had a foreshadowing of in the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, who said, behold, I am doing something new. Something new is coming because what has been happening, what has been going on in your lives is not working. And so we see this, something new, in the book of Joel. I'm titling this sermon, An Uncomfortable Longing. An Uncomfortable Longing. It's like a, a longing for something, but it's a little uncomfortable. Liken it to, well, I shouldn't say that I would know this, but I have observed this, a pregnancy. There's an uncomfortableness to a pregnancy. There's a little bit of a fear of, of the birth, of raising a ch your children, of the heaviness of having kids, of the heaviness of raising kids. But there's also a longing for it. We know this well on this Mother's Day. And so as we think about this uncomfortable longing, as we dive into the book of Joel, would you just pray with me that God would speak into us in mighty and powerful ways this morning. God, Father, you are the source of all light. By you, your word, you give light to the soul. So we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and truth and understanding that our hearts and our minds may be opened. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in this book, in, in the prophecy of Joel, we, in, in the text that we are reading, Joel is going to share with us what I believe to be three important aspects of the Lord. As we think about this uncomfortable longing, as you on this Mother's Day reflect on maybe a bit of an uncomfortable longing that you may have within you, perhaps somewhat of a hopelessness, perhaps somewhat of a despair, or some sort of longing within you, here in the book of Joel, it opens up with this new revelation this something new that is being promised to God's people who are in exile, who have sinned against God, who are in need of a savior, are in need of something new. What, the, what Joel promises to the people in this text first is the spirit of the Lord poured out on you. 
Now you may say, Logan, how could that be uncomfortable? Everything that I have learned about the Spirit of God is awesome and amazing. But you see, in these times, in this space, this would have been very uncomfortable for God's people because all that they knew about the Spirit of God was pretty uncomfortable and a little downright scary. You see, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would come upon a prophet or a person with a very real purpose and power. And God, God's Spirit would come along to, to, to raise up leaders. But this was a temporary pouring out. And it was also exclusive. It was a mi minority. Only certain people would have the Spirit of God poured out upon them. And so the, and the people have seen this, and as they're listening to this revelation, this probably made them a little uncomfortable thinking about these prophets. I mean, if you've been reading through these prophets, they weren't really very normal kind of guys. At one point, the prophet Isaiah, if I remember right, was told to walk around naked for three years. That's kind of uncomfortable. Wait till we get to the prophet Ezekiel. There's some really uncomfortable things that he goes through. The prophet Jeremiah, you look at Moses when the Spirit comes upon him. Elijah, and so we see when there's this promise of this, this uncomfortable longing as, as Joel is declaring this to the people, it's a little uncomfortable, but they're still longing. There's a bit of a paradox here. Look at what he says in verse 12. Yet even now, I'm sorry, verse 28, verse 12 is great. Go back and read that one, but verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward. God has just declared this day of the Lord that will come and this blessing that he will have. And he says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I, this is God, Yahweh, talking, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, pour out. Notice he doesn't say I will sprinkle a little bit of my spirit. He doesn't say I'll give a little bit. No, there's a language of an abundance, of a pouring out on all flesh. You're saying, well, what, what do you mean all flesh? I'm happy you asked. Keep reading. He says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now it's not just these particular people. Now it's your sons and your daughters. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Oh, man, here we go. Even on the male and female servants, in those days, I will pour out my spirit. In other words, the spirit will be on all people. It does not matter your, your, your economic status. It does not matter your gender. It does not matter your race. The spirit will be poured out on all people. This is quite a promise. And also very uncomfortable. We see the uncomfortableness if we remember in the book of Numbers. Do you remember when Moses is raising up some elders, Moses realizes that he couldn't lead the people by himself. So God appoints elders to help him lead, and it says that the Spirit of God would come upon the elders, and they would help by prophesying and, and, and helping Moses to lead the people. And there's this moment when there's these two elders that are off in a different place. And it says that the Spirit of God comes upon them and, 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 and the, the people run to Moses and, and they say, Moses, this is going on. What do we do? And Moses declares to them in Numbers chapter 11 verse 29, he says, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets. That the Lord would put the Spirit on them. You see this longing, but you also feel this uncomfortableness from the people about the Spirit of God coming upon them. And so we feel this uncomfortable longing. 
We recognize that it's for all people, and it's not just something that's given with restraint. It's poured out. Think of my son Tristan. If you ever want to get a good serving of ice cream, ask that boy. He'll probably just give you the whole carton. It's that kind of serving, this abundant serving. So we see the Spirit of the Lord poured out, and hear this, on you. Your circumstance, who you are, this is a promise. But there's another uncomfortable part of the longing. And we've seen this as we've been reading through the book of Joel because there's this uncomfortable day of the Lord that is promised, right? A day of the Lord when the Lord will return, and it's pretty scary. There'll be judgment. There'll be suffering. And we see the just God will pour out the wrath of the Lord on sin. This is a part of the uncomfortable longing. Happy Mother's Day. I'm just going to keep saying Happy Mother's Day to let this sermon feel more like a Mother's Day sermon. <laughs> the wrath of the Lord poured out on sin. We don't want to miss this here. We don't want this to be all butterflies and rainbows and miss the fact that God is promising to make all things right and to deal with our sin. Look at what it says in verse 30. It says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Some translations would say the dreadful there's this dealing with the wrath, this wrath of God out on sin that is just and right and necessary. And that's uncomfortable. This pouring out. So the question as we think about this is what's it being poured out on? It's being poured out on the sin. And it's not just the sin of commission. It's not just the sin that the people have done against the Lord. This would be directly related to idolatry. The sin of self and pride and ego and, and worshiping other gods and turning your back on God. That's part of the sin. But if you've also been reading in Amos and Obadiah, there's also a very real sin of omission of what the people are not doing with regards to justice for the poor and the widow and the orphan, with regards to, to, to this disparity between the rich and the poor within the family of God. And God is saying, I will pour out my wrath on your sin. And as we think about that, happy Mother's Day, how do we deal with that? How, how do we have the Spirit of God poured out and the wrath of God poured out? How do those go together? The Spirit of God seems good, there's vision, there's, there's power, there's, there seems to be very real purpose there. But the wrath of God, if I think about my life, and if I'm very honest, and I think we should all be honest, I fall into the camp of a sinner. And so, so what do I do with this? Well, I would encourage you to keep on reading. Look at verse 32, it says... And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does he mean here? How is simply calling on the name of the Lord bringing about salvation from the wrath of God being poured out by the Spirit of God being poured in? How does this work together? The name of the Lord is we would connect to the name Yahweh, the personal name of God, the powerful name of God. 
And it seems to me as we think about this uncomfortable longing, uncomfortable with the, the uncomfortableness of my own sin or the own, our own darkness as a people, the uncomfortableness of thinking about the Spirit of God coming upon me, and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable, yet there's also a longing for God to do something about it. We fast forward this story as we do in our full story series, and we look towards the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, who would come and dwell among us, who would live a perfect life, not deserving any of the wrath poured out on him, because unlike any other person in the history of humanity, he lived a perfect life. And yet, Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, prays this prayer. Do you remember this moment? Says that Jesus, overcome with agony, as he thought about the cross, he prayed to God, Lord, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. What did he talk, talk about when he meant the cup? The cup was a reference to the wrath of God. And it says that he sweat blood because of the agony of the wrath of God. And it says that he still said, though, and declared, not my will, but yours be done. And we know that on the cross, the wrath of God was poured out on Christ. And he said, Lord, into your hands I commend my spirit. And we know that Jesus' name is what? The name Jesus, Yeshua, means Yahweh saves. So hear this. As we think about this tension, this uncomfortable longing of the Spirit of the Lord being poured out and the wrath of the Lord being poured out, the hope of the gospel says that the name of the Lord is poured out for you and me. The name of the Lord is Jesus, and it was poured out for you and for me, and we see this on the cross in the person of Jesus. Happy Mother's Day. And we see this in the resurrection. Jesus resurrects, and he tells his disciples, remember this story, he tells them to wait, and the Spirit of the Lord will come. Look at what happens in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, Peter gives this wonderful sermon, the first sermon after the resurrection. And he actually, in this sermon, we don't have time to look at it, but he directly quotes the prophet Joel that we just read. And it says that the Spirit came upon all the people, and they were prophesying in different tongues. And they could understand one another. And Peter gave this sermon to the people. To say, this is the day. It says, and when they heard this, the people heard this, it says that they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and look at this and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit repent we see this in the book of Joel if you've been reading these first two chapters there's this promised judgment and then there's this call for the people to repent or he uses the language return at one point he says rend your hearts don't give like this fake repentance. All of you, all of what is within you, rend your hearts. Repent from the other ways. Turn back towards the Lord in the name of the Lord. And so we see this beauty here. And as we think about this on this Mother's Day, we cling to the hope that Jesus was poured out for you so that you could be poured out in him by the Spirit in you. Jesus was poured out for you 
on the cross so that you could be poured out in him by the Spirit in you. When you confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord, it says that the Spirit indwells you. And then we start living as God's people, as a poured out people. Like that is who we are. We are a poured out people. Philippians 2 verse 5 says this. Paul is reflecting on this in his letter to the Philippians. He says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Jesus Christ. Who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, something to be used as to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant. By being made in human likeness. This is talking about the incarnation of Jesus. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient in death, even death on a cross. Jesus was poured out for you so that you could be poured out in him, in Christ alone. Happy Mother's Day. And I see this in mothers. I see this in motherhood, in mo mothers who have poured out their life for their children, who have devoted their life to raising their children, to putting them first. We see this, this interaction of God's people and we don't do it because we're trying to achieve. We're doing it because our Savior did it for us in perfection. And the more that we gaze at him and the more that we learn from him, the more that we long to be poured out into the world. See, church, Jesus was poured out for you so that you could be poured out in him. And hear this, enjoy the comfort you've been longing for. Far too often we think that the longing is uncomfortable. I don't want to, that, that spirit thing is a little uncomfortable. All my sin and all, 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 all my wandering is a little uncomfortable. I don't, I don't know how I could be with Christ. But Christ poured himself out for you so that you could experience the greatest comfort in life and in death. What is our great confession in the Heidelberg? What is your only comfort in life and death? That I am not my own, but I belong body and soul to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nothing uncomfortable about the longing. There's actually the most beautiful, eternal comfort in Christ. And the problem is, for many of us, we live with this uncomfortable longing because we have not declared our faith and rendered our hearts to him. We may have gone through the actions. We may have gone through the motions. But it seems to me as we reflect on this Mother's Day that we are being invited into a comfort that our hearts have eternally longed for. You see, the transformation, hear this, the transformation from sinful vessels of uncomfortable longing to broken vessels of grace happened at the cross. And it's happening in Christ. Have you called upon him? The transformation from sinful vessels, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So dirty, so forgotten. The transformation from sinful vessels of uncomfortable longing. I wish I could have that. I'm pregnant with this longing, but it's uncomfortable. The transformation from that to a broken vessel of grace happened at the cross. Christ paid for it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin have left, has left this crimson stain. He washed me white as snow. It happened at the cross. 
but it's also happening in Christ. To those that are in Christ, we are constantly being formed and changed more into the image of Christ, more into the kind of people who are being poured out in Christ by the Spirit. And we see this in the fruits of the Spirit. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. This is what happens to those who are in Christ. They're not the fruits of Logan. I don't do those things apart from Christ. I'm sorry, you don't. They only happen by the indwelling of the Spirit to those who have confessed and believed in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Have you called upon him? And what I love about that statement, the transformation from sinful vessels of uncomfortable longing, I know it's a mouthful, to broken vessels of grace, is I want to recognize we're still broken vessels of grace. I love in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when Paul is talking to the church, he says, we are jars of clay. And yet there's something about like the cracks and the brokenness where when we recognize that the Spirit of God, the transforming work of God, when, when it says in Corinthians, anyone in Christ is a new creation, the old has gone, the new has come, a transformation, a metamorphosis, I once was a caterpillar, now I'm a butterfly. When this happens in us, the grace of God, as we talked about last week, the unimaginable grace of God, pours out of the cracks and the holes and the crevices. You see this? No longer do people see all the wounds and the darkness and the evil. They see the grace of God pouring out of his people as vessels of grace. Hear this, not perfect people, on the contrary, very imperfect people. Yet, God's grace pours out into the world. Have you called upon him? Have you called upon the name that is above every name? Friends, you can go to church every single Sunday for the rest of your life. You can memorize the catechisms. You can memorize the whole Bible. You can bring people to the Lord. You could go to all the Bible studies, all the community groups, all the mission trips. You could do all the do's and don't do all the don'ts. Yet if you have not confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior and put your faith in him, you're still gonna be in the uncomfortable longing of a life apart from Christ. This is why in Romans, Paul writes about this, hear this. Romans chapter 10 says this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the, ha with the heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches, his grace on all who call on him. And then look at this. Look at what Paul does here. Does this sound familiar? He says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's straight, straight out of Joel. Have you called upon the name of the Lord today? Listen, there's nothing that you need to do to get to a point of calling upon the name of the Lord. All you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord and say, I believe, would you just let your grace pour out of me? I'm a broken vessel. There's this passage in the book of Joel as it continues on, this verse that's just been screaming at me, in verse 14 of chapter 3, says this, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, 
in a space of, of needing to make a decision but not making a decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is near. The Lord will return. He will return and make all things right. Don't live in that uncomfortable valley of decision. Make that decision today. Reminded of a, a friend a couple weeks ago had this dream that she shared with me. And actually the dream was about this very space. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. Happy Mother's Day. In this dream, it says that we were in these four walls. She said that there was water leaking through. We were trying to hold it back trying to patch up the water in the space. As she was sharing this dream with me, she said she just woke up and felt really sad about that. And I asked her, I said, well, what's the water? I don't want to drown. What's that water? Is that a bad thing? And she said, no, Logan, the water in Scripture is always a good thing. Think about baptism. Water connects to the Spirit of God. And we as a people need to rend our hearts to the incredible blessing of grace through Jesus Christ and his spirit in us pouring out. In a few moments, we're going to sing one of my favorite hymns. It's a hymn where the words, I just want you to hear these words of blessing. It says this, come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. You put that up on the screen there, Caitlin. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs. Here's, how, here's what we sing of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount. I'm fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, to grace how great a debtor. Daily I am constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Rend your hearts, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Church, let's together call upon the name of the Lord on this Lord's day. Let's be strengthened by the name of the Lord. Let's rend our hearts to him. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for these words from Joel. I pray, God, right now in this moment, if there's anyone in this space or anybody watching online in the valley of decision, God, I pray that by your spirit, you would cause them right now in this moment to pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I confess you to be my Lord and my Savior. I am a sinner in need of your grace. I put my faith in your grace. And I believe with all of my heart that you have saved me and I commit with all of my heart to pouring out the rest of my life for you. And perhaps for some of us, we have prayed that, we have been faithfully following, but in this moment, maybe you feel like you've been wandering. You've wandered away from the beauty of God's grace, and as a broken vessel, I just encourage you to pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I am prone to wander, but Lord, you are the God who goes and gets me and is drawing me back in on mission by your Spirit. So I open up my heart to your Spirit to move and to work and to guide and to direct and lead me. Seems to me that the Lord is speaking into marriages, into families, into singles, 
into our young college-aged kids, our children, that we would be a people that recognize we are called to call upon the name of the Lord. So as we respond together, I just invite you in this next time of worship, let it be a time of you with your brothers and sisters in Christ calling upon the name of the Lord, the fount of every blessing. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our King. Amen.